In today's video, I cover my new gravel bike build from how it came about, the parts I've chosen to go with, the preparation I've done prior to the build, and we put a number of components on the weight scales. This time last year, I had a loan of a gravel bike for a few weeks that I really enjoyed riding. Being able to point the bike in almost any direction and just ride without the need to worry about what surface I was riding on was a whole new world. The two road bikes I currently own are built for speed, so my options are limited to tarmac surfaces on those. We all know this. So since handing back that loaner gravel bike, the search has been on for my N plus one. N plus one, if you're not familiar, is rule 12, where the correct number of bikes to own is N plus one. Further details on this rule are quite funny. Uh, where the minimum number of bikes one should own is three, the correct number is N plus one, where N is the number of bikes currently owned. I had a laugh at the extension on this where the equation can be rewritten as S minus one, where S is the number of bikes owned that would result in a separation from your partner. Now I've spent months and months looking at my options for N plus one gravel, initially looking at the Chinese open mold frames. They appear to be good value, but adding up all the import fees and taxes and the way they distribute those frames at the moment, that price doubled or tripled. Looking at full bikes, well, they're in high demand, almost impossible to find exactly what I wanted in a full bike. So I was searching high and low. So to cut a long story short, it was my local bike store that came through with the goods. They're only a few blocks down the road. Adam from Bikes on the Trobe had me sorted. He just happened to have a 54 centimeter Cervelo Aspero frame set. This bike or frame set in this case needs no introduction whatsoever. And I will do a full top to bottom review once the thing is completely built, but it ticks all the boxes for me. Now the frame weight comes in at 1.17 kilos and the fork with an uncut steerer in at 460 grams. So that's the frame sorted and a huge thanks to Adam from Bikes on La Trobe for getting the ball rolling finally on the gravel build project. Next up, because the bike doesn't go far without wheels or a group set, that was on the cards. Again, these things are in high demand and limited availability. In recent years, I've become a convert to electronic group sets and I have two bikes with DI2. So GRX DI2 was what I was looking at. However, I couldn't find what I needed for this build. A few phone calls later, a few emails, SRAM Australia put me in contact with SRAM in the US who helped me find all the parts that I needed. And in summary, things escalated pretty quickly. Here's what I went with. This is what they call a SRAM Axis mullet. So business up front, party out the back, and it is one hell of a party at the back of this bike. So up the front, the levers and brake calipers, SRAM Red ETAP Axis hydraulic, rear derailleur XX1 Eagle. The cassette is an XG1299 Eagle Axis 1052. It is a thing of beauty. We'll have a close look at this in just one moment. The chain XX1 Eagle. The crankset is a SRAM Red 1 crankset with an Axis power meter, which is a quark. 44 tooth chainring and that's matched with a dub bottom bracket. A closer look at some of these components. First up, the bottom bracket, weighing in at, uh, stay still, 78 grams. No question, one of my favorite parts of this build is the rear cassette. The XG1299 Rainbow Eagle 1052. It is an absolute dinner plate. Tipping the scales in, at 378 grams. Not too bad given the size of the thing. It's huge. Where would I ever be without a power meter or two on the bike? And here is the quark on the red crankset matched with a 44 tooth chainring, which should give me some okay gearing. Not quite sure if that's going to be my final form for the chainring, but it's going to be a good start. On the weight scales, the whole system at 600 grams flat. Eagle XX1 rear derailleur, the brains of the unit with the SRAM axis setup. Tipping the scales in with battery at 375 grams. Red hydro levers the front, tipping the scales at 235 grams for the right, and the left should be pretty much the same, and it is. As shipped, nothing happens at all, so nothing's paired. We'll quickly put the rear derailleur into pairing mode, wait for the flashies. There we go, showtime. Right lever flashies, left, 
Press and hold. Flashies. That's all it takes. And what do we have? We have action. I could do this all day. And I pretty much did. And things wouldn't be complete unless I pulled the configuration app out and made sure we had the latest firmware on everything. So back to authorization mode for the rear derailleur. The app then is happy. It's authenticated. And we set everything up here within the access app. Waking the levers up, or the controllers, they call them. And we are all good to go. First up, we'll jump over to the rear derailleur, the brains of the unit, and check if there's any firmware updates required for that. And, no, we're good. It's on the latest. We have some micro adjustment settings. We'll look at those another day. Next up, we'll make sure the levers or the controllers are on the latest firmware. And here we go. A new firmware is available. So we'll get that installed straight away. Rinse and repeat for the right hand side. And there we go. All updated, ready to install and live its best life on my new gravel bike. And a quick test to see everything still works. Now onto the chain. Now I've left this last in this section of the video because there's quite a bit of preparation that's gone on for the chain. So the chain obviously comes with the factory packing grease and the little power link weighing in uncut at 261 grams. After Adam from ZeroFrictionCycling.com sang the praises of the new Silka Super Secret Chain Wax, I followed his recommendation for the chain prep, which is four baths of mineral turpentine and two of methylated spirits. The first one, chain goes in and we shake it all about rigorously for a few minutes and then leaving that for half an hour. A few more shakes and literally rinse and repeat three more times on the mineral turpentine side of things. And after the fourth, the mineral turpentine is crystal clear and the chain looks to be stripped of all that packing or factory grease. Next up over to the methylated spirits to evaporate all the nasties. Drying the chain off. Then it was onto the super secret chain lube, which is a drip wax and carefully applying that to every single roller, making sure the roller spun around. This did take some time, but for this bike, I wanted to make sure everything was as optimal as possible. And that does including using a wax chain. Okay, taking the time to make sure everything is good to go. And that sits on the shelf for 24 hours and ready for the install. The pedals I'm going with for this gravel bike are the Fevero Asioma Duos with the SPD pedal bodies on them. It's a hack conversion we did last year. I'll link below to the video on that. It's not an official product from Fevero, but they work very, very well. Before getting to the wheels, let's have a look at the bars, stem, post, and the saddle. So the bars, the Zip Service Course SL70s, the stem, Zip Service Course 100mm stem, the post, I'm undecided. I have the zip post to install, but I also have the Aspero frame post to put in. So I'm gonna to have to weigh those up after the build. Initially, I'll go with the zip post. The saddle, a little undecided on that, but I have the Pro Stealth that we'll use on the bike, and we'll see how that goes off-road. 
Weighing handlebars on one of these scales is almost an impossible task, but thanks to the zero offset, we can use my USB battery and 265 grams for the bars. The stem rolling in at 138 grams. Okay, finally onto the wheels and tires I've gone with for this project. And again, availability came into play here. The highly recommended Zip 303 S's are just unavailable until early in the new year. So next best option, these things right here, and they are absolutely beautiful. Uh, Zip 303 Firecrest 2021 model, uh, quick rundown, 40 mil deep, 25 mil internal rim width, hookless, claimed weight with no rim tape is 1352 grams. Putting these wheels on the scales in the Llama garage, I get a total of 1366 grams with rim tape. And double checking the inner width here and it is spot on. Those magnificent rims are being paired with what I hope are magnificent tyres. So I've gone with the Zip Tangente Course G40 tubeless, which are hookless compatible for those rims. Both tyres weighing in at 480 grams each. Onto the tubeless tyre installation. We have everything prepared, ready to go. We have some warm, soapy water. We have the rims, obviously. We have the valves. We have the sealant. We have the core remover. We have the floor pump, which I'll try to use. But as a backup, I have this now, an air compressor. Starting off with the valve installation and the core removal. And I'm going to try and install these tires without any levers or levers. A little bit of soapy water helps pop them on the rim. And we are on. The question is, will they pop onto the bead, the hookless bead, with just a floor pump? Waiting for that sound. There it is. And... We are good. Brilliant. 60 mil of sealant for these. Installing that on a little bit of an angle. Managing to spill some. Par for the course. And we are good. We are very, very good. Spinning nice and true. And I'm happy with that. Rinse and repeat for the rear tire. Again, managing to get the tire on with no tools. I was pretty happy with that. Floor pump test. And the sound. Oh, there it is. Gonna be more. Oh, no. it always makes me nervous. <laughs> but once it's on, we are good. 60 mil of sealant into that tire, pumped it back up again. Doesn't get any easier than that for tubeless installs. Smooth as silk. Absolutely brilliant. And here's the finished product, ready to roll. So there we have it, all the parts and some preparation for this dream gravel bike build. As I said early on, I was looking at the cheap option, things escalated, I think I'll end up with a pretty nice bike. So all that's left now is the actual building of this bike. Now I've been watching a lot of dream build videos from Nick over at the Drop Cycling. Nick does a brilliant job with these dream builds and captures the whole process on video for his YouTube channel. I reached out to Nick last week, who's on board to put this dream bike gravel build together for me. I'll put a link in the video description below to Nick's channel, so head over there, hit subscribe, and you'll be alerted as soon as that video is released. And as soon as I get my hands on this bike, take it for a few rides, I'll be back with a new Bike Day video. I can't wait for this one. Stay tuned.